Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jose, the California Beekeeper. Hey, today we are bringing you guys the first episode of this vlog series where beekeepers from all over the nation come to California for almond pollination. Uh, we are calling this vlog series Vlog Nation. So, hey guys, if you're new to this channel, well, go down below, smash that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up on this video. Today we are in Williams, California, and I'm meeting up with some old buddies from Wyoming. I've known these guys for years, uh, man, 10 years, 10 years, working alongside with these guys from their honey facility, Bucking Honey, um, in Wyoming, to over here in Chico, California, shaking uh, packages for their own nukes. Um, Man, we've done it all. So I'm really excited to be filming with these guys here today here in California. And, uh, well, let's do it. Over here with uh, Brandon Bryant. He is. What is your position in? Uh... Yeah, what is? Our... <laughs> yeah, we run a family business, and there is uh, my brother Brady, my uncle Bob, and my dad Don. Uh, my dad Don, we call the head honcho. He uh, he's the one we all turn to for everything. Uh, we all kind of play different roles in the business um you know and kind of help out when it comes to uh the main tasks but uh i i like to concentrate uh myself on queens in the spring and and making sure that all of our hives are healthy and uh making sure our mite counts are low and just making sure that the bees are going in a forward direction um my brother he, he really likes the business side of things the marketing, the uh, you know management and stuff like that, um, and then you know my dad, he's just a go-getter. He just wants to go 100 miles an hour, and he loves this every single day. How long have your your family been coming out here to California? Well, that's a good question. It's, it's got to be uh, 30 30 plus years, um, because they were doing it. Uh, right when I right after I was born, they started sending bees to California. And so yeah. I'm 36 now, so um, I, somewhere around 30 years, I think they've been sending uh, sending. 30 these. years, so how old is the, the family business? Yeah, so my, uh, my brother and I are the fifth generation of our family. Uh, and our, our business, Bryant Honey, was set up in 1915. Uh, prior to that, our family ran bees, cows, chickens, the whole grocery store. So over a hundred years. So over a hundred years, uh, we've been we've been chasing bees around and uh, yeah, making honey. Mainly always making honey. Um, that was our our, our our thing. We're Sioux Bee members, and uh, my family's really proud of being Sioux members and uh, delivering delivering a great product to them and um, to supply here in the United States. And we. Uh, We've been in the Bighorn Basin all, all 100 years in Wyoming. Um, and now we run, operate out of uh, eight counties in Wyoming, uh, two counties in South Dakota, and a couple counties in Nebraska as well. Um, so we're, we're really spread out um, nice. across uh, everywhere. We have bees all across Wyoming um, for honey production. 
And that's that's really, if you ask my dad, he'll tell you he's a honey producer. Yes. Um, you ask me, I'm a beekeeper. To me now, the, the honey is the byproduct of, uh, of what we do. Um, the pollination is, uh, is a, big, a big source of income for us. And, uh, and so I, I really like to concentrate on that part. Yes. What are your opinion on the almond pollination? The good and the bad? Yeah. Oh man, uh, what a great way to start our spring off uh, by getting this great almond pollen. Uh, that's probably my most exciting time of the year is uh, coming in here after the bloom starts and just smelling the full hives of uh, brood and um, you know just having the bees excited to be uh, you know that they're doing something. Yeah. Um, and so that part of me for the, the pollination is uh, is is just great. Uh, the hard part for me, the biggest hard part for me is, is being away from home, being away from my family. Uh, I have two little girls at home and so I, as much as I can be with them, I, I definitely like to do that. Uh, other, uh, you know, other downsides, you know, getting, getting, having to put bees in in the rain and, you know, stuff like that. Those are all just challenges. I don't yes. know if I really, uh. I like a challenge, so year to year, I think that's why I'm in beekeeping is because things are just always changing and yes. you, you always have to adapt and if you don't adapt, then you better have learned and then adapt. Yes. Um, and so, I, uh, man, that's just, the Paul, the, the, I think it's great. I just, uh, once, I really knew I wanted to be uh, a beekeeper once I came and started, saw this part of the business. Uh, the pollination side of the business, I was like, it really turned me on more to beekeeping um, because I just saw um, so much more of the industry. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't all just laboring honey. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, guys, that is Brandon with uh, Bryant Honey. And I've known these guys for about over 10 years uh, doing honey in Wyoming and their bee yards and to uh, shaking packages in Chico, California for their nukes. So uh, we've been through a lot. Was really excited to come do this, joining these guys from California or from Wyoming here in California. And uh, so this is our first video of our vlog series for Vlog Nation guys. So Vlog Nation guys, check it out. Let's do it. Check it out. Hit that subscribe button. And we're going to show you guys a little bit about when the semis come in what that looks like and uh, we're gonna give you the whole rodeo. Everything's getting fed right now. We just do. We just blanket feed anymore. Yeah. Uh, we used to spot feed and and we'd come back and find one or two and it's like, well, yeah. In that ex, in those spot feeds, it's just easier for everybody. We just blanket feed it. Go so if they're real heavy, we'll we'll skip it. But for the most part, we feed everything, especially this time of year. We try to pump that queen to really get her going. So she'll start rearing. When it's um, when the bloom's already on, you guys come back. We usually come back right before the bloom, or and kind of during. And uh, crank the feed and crank the feed again, and uh, and then sometimes, well, depending on the year and how they've carried over with the trees, if they've gotten much, depending on our next uh, feeding schedule. Uh, but from here on out, we're trying to bump them up now for. Summer, spring. This is this the, is all stores from. Uh, yep. Second day. This is the second day out of the sheds for these ones. 
most of the time we see them, they start to come out and they start laying on the way out here if they haven't already. As warm as it is, you would think you would think they would really get after it. Oh yeah, she's laid out on this side. Sheds compared to no sheds, what, what do you think the, the loss percentage is? We're still seeing a higher percentage loss out here in California uh, with our bees that we send out here. But we're still below 10% on average in the sheds. Um, I think most of them were coming around like seven, eight uh, percent of of loss is what we're each each load is having after they've come out of the shed. We try to cull through them pretty good before they go into the shed, so kind of got to factor that into it a little bit. But the thing yeah. is, we haven't fed them once since October, and uh, you know they've just been sitting around and. And hanging out now they're gonna come out here they're gonna have all this pollen from the fall and all the honey that they have from the fall and they haven't used it in the last two months and so now they're gonna have a great start to just really ramp up ramp up i i think nice so yeah we'll give them a little pollen give them some feed to a little extra kickstart. i weigh the loads before they go into the sheds and each load we have them separated out color coded um, by year, uh, queen year, and then owners. Oh, uh, oh, free, the since, breeder, right? Yep, yeah, okay. yep. Um, and then um, that way we know what loads are going in and what loads are coming out. So we kind of have an idea of area of where they were at after they came out. So then we can kind of factor that into loss a little bit as well. Uh, but so far the six loads that have came out so far, they've all um, lost about 2,000 pounds in weight, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. And so we're still about that one, 175 mark a week uh, that, they, that they lost. Yeah. Um, and so the, the rule of thumb kind of is, is if you can keep them under two pounds a week, then they should have enough stores to make it all the way through. A lot of that factor has to do how cold they're keeping that shed. Yeah. So, nice. A lot of factors go into the. Too um, many factors. A lot of factors <laughs> go into the shed. But I mean, if we can preserve all those fall bees till now, um, you know. Yeah. It just gives them that many more to get started. We notice. We notice that we're gonna drop a frame, you know, a frame and a half here. Um, yeah. Now after they've come out, because they're gonna, they are gonna shed those winter bees you know yeah um, but well, for the most part they should be in a forward motion now sweet for your growers i know growers can be picky about their beekeepers yeah what about the beekeeper to the grower do you, uh, do you, do you like do i'm you very into? picky yeah i'm very picky i'm i'm really uh paying attention and asking them um, guys that are guys that are still you know fogging in the middle of the day you know if they're not willing to work with us I'm not we're not willing to work with them yeah uh, it, it has to go both ways yeah I'm out here to pollinate their crop but this is only a small step in my operation you know? yeah it's a big piece but it's only a small step in my operation getting the bees to this point takes a lot and if you get out here and you got a careless grower that they're just going after the pounds, you know, the weight average or, you know, for the trees and not, not worried about anything else that's happening in the environment. You know. And we're starting to be a lot more picky. Uh, and I feel like we're going to be able to kind of be a little bit more picky with, uh, with the growers because I, I feel like a lot of the, I think a lot of these smaller guys are going to, they're gonna fill the hurt this year. Yeah. And so I think because I of um, availability of bees, or uh, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I think we're gonna hit a surplus of bees here at some point. Yeah. So I think the relationships you want to keep your relationships with your. But, but I think right now is kind of the time where you need to be making sure that you have good relations with the guys you have or have a solid background as well. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's these are trying times for everybody. So, yeah, I think relationships are very important in, in our in our industry. Uh, a lot of what we do is on a handshake and us telling yeah. them that, yeah, you got two boxes of bees there, and they're yeah. putting a lot of trust into into us. So, 
Uh, I think I think that's a huge huge thing, and I and I really look for look for those relationships. I want a, I want a friend out here. Yeah. And I want somebody who you know is excited to see me come in. You know. Yeah. And do a good job. Oh yeah. So we. Yeah. We, Migratory beekeeper lifestyle. There you go. Who doesn't love tacos? Mm -hmm. How you been? Yeah, pretty good, bud. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Yeah, sure. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
calling fire. Calling fire. <laughs> so now they have two loads coming in. They're trying to drop these loads as fast as they can. It's a warm night tonight. It got up high of, I think, 80 to here in Williams, California. So the whole thing about getting them off the truck as fast as possible is because when it's hot, warmer days, they generate so much heat. So they need to pull the nets off, get these forklifts rolling and start dropping these loads. They're gonna light up their, um, their little drops, inspect them really quick, load them up onto the trucks and into the orchard, in and out. It's wild, but oh man, this is fun. I miss this. happening now is now they are starting to get the hives that were inspected loaded onto the flatbeds and into the orchards now so the, in this process there's a lot of consolidation going on um, hives that don't meet grade are removed or whatever it is that's going on in that pallet if there's two dinks too good then yes you, you're consolidating to make complete full pallets. Um, that way um, they can be, well, they can be complete units dropped into the orchards. Through them, make sure they're good. Yeah. Onto the truck. Onto the truck and into the orchard. Yeah. Well, I feel so far most of the ones I've been, I think they've carried their weight pretty good. Yeah, you can see where, she, where the brood chamber there. Right. On this side? Yeah, that frame there. Oh, yeah. Sealed brood right there. they're doing here is commercially we do a, a tilt to inspect the bottom of the hives and uh, it's an easy way without breaking the cluster in the middle yeah hopefully we did all of our beekeeping this fall and uh, everybody went into the sheds queen right yeah and so now they're just gonna come out and just take off that's the goal <laughs> that's the goal <laughs> so I, I mean i'm liking what we're seeing we're not seeing a lot we're not dropping a lot so i think our percentage for uh coming out will be good uh i mean 
less than 10 percent for sure Sweet. so far so i, I saw i did notice where you said um or was it um well, like this is that right yep yep yeah that's rough and that's from being too close yeah i think probably. so i think that they probably they probably weren't getting good circulation and some of that is we've found that hives that are really really heavy and have a ton of ton of bees that they have they have a harder time uh keeping them keeping them cold obviously because yeah. there's, there's that many more bees and so yeah generating so much heat yep and so if they're not if they're in a bad spot where they're not getting full circulation of that air it really affects them and you can see a big difference uh, we've had years where we could tell a difference between the top the top pallets and the bottom pallets, bottom oh, wow. pallets, yeah. where they were at in the, in the shed. So yeah, keeping them cool that's really important uh, for the whole goal of of the shed. What was the price on that? Uh, you can see every anywhere from uh, eleven to thirteen dollars. Um, we we we've been in for quite a few years and yeah. so uh, luckily but uh at the one shed that we're in right now this year they put a little over 60,000 colonies in it nice so. this truck right here is ready to go Load it up. Now they'll get strapped up there. Run straps all the way down. So how fast do you guys go through a load? Usually. Uh, 30 minutes, like, 45 minutes? I say like 45 minutes to an hour. So just like that guys, they are rolling, 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 rolling with the smokers. You have to be on top of these, these hives, smoking them back in is very important because when they're on the trucks, they start to get bearded out on these hot days. I mean, it's, I think it's like 65, 70 right now. Um, when they're bearded, they start to crawl over to the other hives. That's the problem. So it's very important to smoke them, smoke them fast, smoke them in. Man, this is fun. Woo. Yeah. What is the game plan? We're gonna go and we're over here. We're gonna start just working our way around the outsides. End up over here somewhere. And those are pallets. Pallets, yep. So these are drops of six. Each one of these we go six, six, five, five. Um, and so each each spot um they want a different they want a different number they have a set of numbers that they've mathematically figured out where they <laughs> need to be yeah i mean and so it's down to two pallets in the center of the, these so this is all the way around the outside of the orchards we go around and set all of them around the outside of the orchards and then right as bloom starts we come in and we put them down the center rows or the tree rows. Got it. And uh, we just do that because it's so much colder inside uh, the trees that they're usually uh, at least at a frame and a half to two frames of bees behind. Oh, they decline? Yep. And so they, when we first put them in, they go backwards a little bit and then they're just all year trying to catch back up. Yeah. And so uh, we've, we've started just to leave them out and the last minute put them in and they do a lot better they're doing a lot better sweet that's so a good method good method we're uh we're gonna do that and i think we're gonna put them down this center row tonight too 
Um, I think we're gonna have enough sun in here. Yeah, those ones are usually pretty wide, don't yeah, they? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, they're pretty wide. So I think we're gonna start, we'll do some of these tonight too. Cool. So yeah. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. It's incredible how you don't get lost in these orchards when you're, you've done it for years. Right. Isn't it? Oh, when I first came out here, oh my gosh. Ken Smith, he would, he would get out, or we'd go out to the truck and at the shop, and he would draw maps for me in crayon. This is before Google. Yeah. And he would draw maps on the bed for me, and I would be driving around, have to stop, get out, and be like, Oh yeah, that house, that green house he was telling me about, and have to, you know, reroute and go this way. And, yeah. And then at night, so you find them, you know, at night we're so used to it, working them, moving them in, moving them out. And then you come to the during the day, and everything looks different. And you get lost in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I should know this, but it looks completely different. You know, all of a sudden there's a house there. And, I came out one year. I was out here. Uh, there's the guy's house that we'll drive by tonight. He came out with a shotgun because he thought I was stealing diesel, and I didn't even know I was parked next to his house. Like I, I was just right at coming in the middle of the orchard, just running bees down, and and he, all of a sudden this guy's standing there, and I'm like, "Whoa, you guys steal my diesel?" And I'm, no, no, sir, no, just, just trying to put bees out. <laughs> So, yeah, there's been a many a times. Uh, adventures. Adventures. Yeah. I've, I've placed them in the wrong orchards and had to come back the next morning and move them. And, yeah. That What's the worst happened. blooper you've had oh, man. on a pollination season? One that just stands out. It's full forklift stuck, a trailer, oh, a what? We, we buried Bud um, out in Oakdale. And... It was, uh, he was supposed to come in at night and ended up getting held up. So I was like, oh, I'll load you out in the morning. We'll just hurry. Yeah. And we'll get you on the road right away and you'll be fine. And got him tied down. He started to roll forward and it was, it was grass. And his, he just started spinning. And as he was spinning, it, uh, he went into a hole, uh, the trailer went into a hole and just sucked the whole back end in. Dang. And so we broke two straps. We broke two straps trying to get him out. We had two forklifts on the back and trucks on the front. Couldn't, wouldn't even budge. So I went down the road and I saw a guy, uh, in a dairy farm and I went in there and I was like, Hey, can you bring your tractor up and help us? You know, I'm going to really have a mess here in about 30 minutes Yeah. <laughs> if we don't get something. And so he's like, the guy's like, uh, you know, didn't speak English. I was trying to speak Spanish, which was horrible. And like, he finally got, okay. Started following me. Cause I was like showing him honey. I'm like, I'll give you honey. <laughs> and so he follows me up there and that, dozer was the front wheels were coming off the ground and he just got bud moving and his boss came up the owner came up and i feared for my life that guy was he oh, was he not was happy mad, yeah. yeah that's his only equipment that he has to run his business and breaking it doing stupid shit like this for dumbasses that get stuck <laughs> but you got like, unstuck yeah. Oh, yeah. We got unstuck. But that guy rolled up right when we got unstuck. Man. I mean, so he saw his guy wheeling this uh, dozer. He saw him wheeling this dozer, and he just flipped. And I just remember that guy coming unglued at me, and I'm like, okay, this is not Wyoming anymore. So, these are the flaggers these here are the flags tell you that these are the drops time to unload the drop over here
beekeepers, when they are flying out here to work and place bees into the almonds, they are grinding away. They are working hard around the clock because they are trying to go home as fast as possible uh, because it's in no time. They're going to be right back over here applying pollen patties, getting ready for splits, um, dropping cans. I mean, once these bees get into some of this pollen, um, pollen bloom, or this pollen from the, from the almonds, they explode, they explode, and it's pretty cool to see. Um, so yeah, you know, they're just go, go, go. And you know, these guys at seven o'clock right now, and some of these guys, they'll be out here working from sun up to sun down, even all through the night, long nights. I remember these long nights, they were, they were exhausting, but man, when you are done, you feel so accomplished. It's, it's, it's a, well, I can't cuss, but it's a, it's a sweet feeling, man. Finish the drop, finish that truck over there. Excellent. Sometimes when they're in uh, in in little levees like this, uh, narrow, it is pretty important for the beekeepers to put to put all the, um, the hives in a row. And this is what your row would look like, and that's so traffic can get through here. <laughs> the buds are starting to swell here. Two or three weeks, probably, if this heat continues. So we finished all of these back here. All of these are done. And so we're gonna come in and drop a few out in the trees where uh, it's real wide and we know they're gonna get some sun, so. Sweet. Flight time matters. Yes, it does. These drops here that they have, sometimes these orchards are separated in blocks. And the reason why they have them in blocks is because it's such a big orchard. They need to be able to access um, that center row for whatever, if it's equipment, whatever it is that they need it for. But there's usually this big open area, just like this. And it, these little areas are great because they get full, full sun. And full sun is uh, more flight time. And the flight time is very, very important uh, for the bees and for the grower. This stuff right here, right here, it's something else. It is something else. <laughs> All right guys, this is going to be our last drop right here. And well, hope you enjoyed this whole little adventure of pollination at a commercial level. This is a lifestyle and it's fun, it's challenging, and you really have to be about the bees or else you will not make it into the beekeeping industry. Even keeping bees alive is very important that you don't give up. As long as you're willing to learn, you're already almost there. <laughs> so anyhow, that is it right there. So, four on the inside, 192 on the outside, and we've got... we got 224. So you got the extra. So you can still take some back and put them in the middle if you want. All right. 
on the forklift. Dropping right here. 112 on this truck. Set and we got on the outside 108. So yeah, that's it. We are done, guys. That's a wrap. Woo. It is 939. 940. We're gonna still get our five hours in. Oh yeah. We're short one pallet somehow. Brad had 112 on, they did the whole outside row. And there was supposed to be 108. And they got to the last one. Strap that forklift down! Alright guys, that's it for the night. And Brandon Bryant from Bryant Honey, thanks for uh, bringing us and uh, sharing the the whole operation that you guys get down over here in, in the pollination. So maybe in the future they'll have us over to uh, their honey facility. So I don't know. You never know. You'll have to, you'll have to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, and, hit that. Uh, find out, you know. That's right. One shout out to uh, my daughter Finley Bryant. She loves YouTube. So shout out to Finley Bryant and everybody out there in uh, internet land. That's Keep right. Keep it rolling. We're out. All right, guys. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, go down below, hit that subscribe button, and give us a big thumbs up on this video. Thanks a lot.